So Fly, Fly 2 actually almost made it to orbit. Um, so, uh, in fact, ironically, if, um, if it had, had a payload, it would have made it to orbit. Uh, because the reason that it actually didn't quite make it to orbit was we vented the liquid oxygen. And the liquid oxygen uh, ultimately led to fire and an, ex and an explosion. Because we, we wanted to vent the liquid oxygen because we normally wouldn't have that liquid oxygen if we had a payload. <laughs> so, ironically, if it had, had a payload, it would have reached orbit. Um, and so I think we've got a really good shot of reaching orbit with flight three, and then uh, a rapid cadence to achieve full and rapid reusability. And I mean, the, kind of the mind-blowing thing is, like, there is an actual path that we are on to make life multiplanetary. Can you friggin' believe that? Like, what? <laughs> I Yeah, we just got to get it done before civilization ends. But, <laughs> but like, I think we, I think it's going to happen. Um, yeah, right here. So, anyway, so in terms of getting there, we want obviously want to accelerate the production and testing, um, get to a high cadence. Uh, you know, for for any given technology development, there it is. Um, you know, how many iterations do you have and what is the amount of time between each iteration? So every time we launch, we learn, every time we launch or do a test, we, we learn something more. So increasing that cadence of launching and testing. Um, and it's always better to sacrifice uh, hardware rather than sacrifice time. Like time is the, true, the one true currency. Um, so it's, it, the fa it's sort of the fastest path to, uh, you know, as I was saying earlier, rapidly Re rapidly reusable, reliable rocket. Um, yeah. So, um, and we've got uh, yeah a block, uh, sort of a version two ship uh, that will be more reliable, better performance, endurance. We've got a, a version three ship uh, design that will stretch that that be even taller. <laughs> Probably end up being I don't know 140 meters before it's all said and done. Maybe 150 in the end. In, in, term, in length, um, so uh, yeah, so it'll be even taller <laughs> than it currently is. Um, yeah, and so with with flight with, with flight one, the goal was not to blow the, the the pad up and ideally get get some distance, which we did. With flight two, it was to get past uh, staging, so we achieved the goal of getting past uh, staging. And almost to orbit, and then flight uh, flight three. We've got uh, well, we want to get to orbit, and we want to do uh, an, an in space uh, engine burn uh, from the header tank and and prove uh, the that we can re reliably deorbit. Um, we want to do a tipping point uh, header domain uh, propellant transfer. Uh, this is uh, important for the uh, NASA Artemis program, and uh, we want to. Uh, also demonstrate the, the payload door for the sort of PES dispenser for um, delivering the Starlink, the, the, the V2 non-mini, actually probably V, I guess V3 technically, uh, but really the really giant satellites to uh, orbit. Um, yeah. So, like I said, the, the, the mass orbit ultimately of Starship will be you know, over time, I think millions of tons of, of payload to orbit. Um, so, it's, it, I mean, compared to present day mass to orbit, it'll be more than more than a thousand times. I mean, you know, more, more than a thousand times greater than uh, mass to orbit currently. That's what it will be eventually, or it needs to be. Um, So we also want to demonstrate uh, on-orbit refilling. This is uh, very important for the NASA Artemis program. Um, so we're very proud to be part of the NASA Artemis program. I'm always in incredibly grateful to NASA for their support um, and for trusting us uh, to do um, to take take astronauts to orbit, to trans take cargo to the space station, and to be an integral part of of getting astronauts back to the moon. Um, one of the other questions I get a lot is, did we really go to the moon? Um, I've gotten that from, from a lot of people. 
And I'm like, yes, we went to the moon. Uh, more than once, in fact. Uh, but the crazy thing is that it's been over half a century since we last went to the moon. So, uh, you know, that's the, I think what, maybe that's what causes people to be skeptical. Like, how come we, we can't go to the moon now? Um, it was 66 years from the first controlled powered flight of the Wright brothers in 1903 uh, to landing on the moon in 69. So only 66 years. But, you know, over, like 50 years have passed since we last went to the moon. Um, but now we're going to go back there, and we're going to go back there soon. Um, and we're not going to go just, I think, like we want, the next step, I think, is to build a, a, a moon base, like moon base alpha. Make sci-fi real. <laughs> not to, add, remove the fire part of sci-fi. <laughs> so, um, but, now one, but in order to go and land on the moon, one of the technical challenges we have to solve is uh, orbital refilling, where we dock, the starships dock on orbit and transfer propellant. Um, now, we've gotten very good at docking, because we've, we dock with uh, Dragon to the space station, which is actually more complicated than docking with our own spacecraft. So we have a lot of expertise in docking, so I'm, I'm confident we will solve this, and we just ideally want to solve it, hopefully by the end of this year, uh, but certainly by, uh, by next year. Um, and that, that's a big deal. This is one of the fundamental technologies that's necessary um, to, to build a city on Mars and to have a, Mars, a moon base. Um, and then, yeah, we'll also be launching some very big satellites. Um, world's biggest Pez dispenser. And we do hope to do this uh, by the end of this year. Um, and then, yeah, more about the NASA uh, human landing system. So, um, as I said, we're extremely grateful to NASA for entrusting us with a fundamental part of the Artemis program. Uh, we want to make sure we do a great job for NASA. Um, and, uh, and really, the, we, like we are a very fundamental part of the, uh, the Artemis program. So if we, if we do not succeed, which we will, um, but, but we, in order for the Artemis program to succeed, we must succeed with, uh, with, with Starship. Um, and um, like I said, we actually want to far, far, ex, far exceed what NASA has asked us to do. So, so the, we, we want to go far beyond the NASA requirements and, and actually be able to put enough payload on the moon um, with enough frequency that you could actually have a permanently occupied moon base. That's, that's the next really big threshold from Apollo, uh, is have, a, have an actual moon base. Um, I remember seeing this, like, I guess kind of cheesy sci-fi show a long time ago called Moon Base Alpha. Uh, I don't know if anybody's seen that, but, um, like, the moon actually drifts away from Earth. Now, this is not going to happen, but, um, but it was a cool show, Moon Base Alpha. Um, but we need a real Moon Base Alpha, and we're going to do it. So uh, then, uh, yeah, as I was saying, the, this is the long-term goal. This is what we want Mars to look like, is uh, starships coming and going, um, an incredible, beautiful Mars city, and uh, a flourishing uh, civilization on Mars. Um, and um, you know, ultimately, we can transform Mars into an Earth-like planet with uh, terraforming. Um, just needs to be warmed up, really, and then you could it, it could be ultimately an Earth-like planet, 